All right, in this video, we are going to try to do 1991 AB6, um, so number six from the AP Calculus exam, 1991, super old problem, but for whatever reason, I, this is like what I think of when I think of um, related rates on the AP Calculus exam. This is the problem, the tightrope walker. Um, so let's see if we can make sense of it. So a tightrope is stretched across um, 30, no, 30 feet above the ground between the J and T buildings that are 50 feet apart. Okay, so J building, T building, and uh, 30 feet above the ground, and so this. All right, and they're 50 feet apart, so this distance is 50. Okay, um, the tightrope walker walking at a constant rate of two feet per second, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna call that yet, but like this is your tightrope walker, I guess. Uh, from point A to B, illuminated by a spotlight 70 feet, oh my God, 70 feet above point A. Okay, um, so how fast is the shadow of the tightrope walker's feet moving along the ground? This is the ground. And then this point right here is where her shadow is. So I think that that's the important thing to realize like this is where her, her shadow is. This is where her feet are. So it's really like the spotlight is like hitting like her heel, like the back of her foot. That's where that shadow is coming from. Um, all right, when she is halfway between the buildings. So I'm gonna need a better picture, just a little more mathematical. So uh, here and then here. So this is gonna be 50. No, it isn't. It's gonna be 25 because uh, she's halfway, right? So. This will be 25. No, when she's halfway, when she is half, what am I answering? <laughs> How fast is the shadow type of worm feeding moving along when she is midway between the buildings? All right, so this is gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be 25. Now, when that's 25, no. Okay, well, I gotcha. I think I got this. Here we go. And then, here we go. So halfway, so this will be 25, right? So the whole thing is 50. And so she's only gonna be 25. So she'll be like here, but that doesn't mean that her feet are gonna be here at 50. So this is, this is what I needed. This is the stuff. All right, so 70, 30. Now, I don't want this to say 25. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna call this X and I'm gonna call this Y. And then I am looking, so I'm gonna move this now. All right, okay, we, we, we got this, we're good to go, potentially. So this is question A. All right, so we were told in the problem that she is walking, so dx dt, she is walking two feet per second. So dx dt is positive two because it's getting longer over time. And we're trying to find dy dt. I think it's good with related rates to like rewrite the problem in the context of the math, like not in the context of the problem, take the context out and just turn it into math. Um, find dy dt when x is 25. That's, that's what we're trying to do. All right, so we need a relationship. I definitely see some similar triangles here. So I'm going to say that uh, y over 100 is equal to x over 70. Right, so I just did uh, think horizontal over vertical equals horizontal over vertical. And so that means that dy dt is, well, one over 100 dy dt is uh, one over 70 dx dt. So it took me a little while to like work my way into this problem, but now I think I'm ready. Now, now I think I got a handle on this. Multiplying by 100, I get 10 over seven dx dt. So dy dt is just going two, so 20 over seven feet per second. There you go, that's, that's your shadow. So the shadow is moving, the shadow, this is lengthening by 20 over seven feet per second when she is 25 feet, I don't know, halfway between the buildings, 25 feet from the one building, but from both buildings because it's the midpoint. So anyway, 20 over seven, how far from point A 
is the tightrope walker when the shadow of her feet reaches the base of the T building. So now this is the thing that I was like having trouble with before because I initially thought like when she was halfway, her feet would be there. Not necessarily the case. So what I need to do is I really kind of like need this picture again. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna copy this and then maybe change it a little, duplicate you. Okay, so let's do problem B. So in problem B, the shadow is going to hit the base of the building. So, so her shadow is the line. It's going to hit here. So now we're just trying to solve this. Not even really a calculus problem. Probably trying to set us up for part C. I find they do that often. It's like the more difficult it is to understand a question, the more likely they are to ask like a simple question um, to get you like kind of oriented to it. So this will be 50. I think this is the same thing. Like, can I do like X over 70 equals 50 over 100? So X over 70 is one half. So X is 35 feet. So she will be 35 feet from whatever, J, building J. Yeah. So here's building J. She'll be 35 feet from that when her feet, when well, when the shadow finally hits the building. Now here's the thing, after that point, after she's gone 35 feet, where's her shadow gonna go? Her shadow is gonna start climbing up the building. So that's something we gotta keep in mind. Once you've hit the building, as you get closer, your shadow is gonna start climbing up the building. So that's interesting. So how fast is the shadow of the type rope tight? I feel like I can't say that type. I think I'm saying type rope, tight rope. Walker's feet moving up the wall of the T building when she is 10 feet from point B. All right, this time I'm gonna do like a whole new picture because what's happening is, you know, you have this and this, right? These are our buildings. And then uh, you have this and she's gonna be 10 feet. So I'm just gonna draw like this. Okay, so I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say that this is still x. So dx dt is still 2. So this little segment here, I'm going to label as 50 minus x because I don't want to call it something else. And like the whole distance is 50, and one of them is already defined to be x. So like, let's do that. And then uh, this I know is 70. That's just like a given. I'm going to call this y. Okay, so I want to use some similar triangles, I think. I think it's gonna be like uh, this, this over this is equal to this over this, right? Because the right angle is the same. Uh, man, I was not, was not thinking that this would happen. Uh, the right angle is the same and then vertical angles are congruent. So like the side between those two angles to the side, like whatever opposite from the orange, I guess. So the relationship, I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna take this picture with me, but uh, I think we have enough. I think we can do this. Confident, fairly confident. Am I super confident? Yeah, pretty much. I think if we get this wrong, it'll be a silly mistake. So here's what I'm saying. I think that x over 70 is going to be equal to 50 minus x over y. And then the question is, what's dy dt? So like, I'm going to rearrange this before I find a derivative, because right now, uh, it's like, it's a, it, it looks pretty bad right now. So I'm going to say that y is equal to uh, 70 times 50 minus x over x. Then I feel like you can make your life easier potentially by, um, I'm going to like expand this. So I'm going to leave the 70, but I'm going to make it like 50 over x minus one. That I, I feel like I don't mind taking the derivative of that. So d dt of y, d dt of this, this is not going to be a product rule. 
Uh, I am going to make it 50x to the negative first, so that it's like a little easier to take the derivative of. Okay, so dy dt is going to be uh, 70 and then negative 50 over x squared. So then the real question is, what's oh, dx dt? Oh my god, chain rule, man. That's why, see, writing this saved me. Seeing this saved me. That's why you don't use primes. That's why you use your whole differential notation. Uh, I guess the real question is, what is x? Oh, wait, x was given, right? Well, x is sort of indirectly given. So if she is 10 feet from b, then that means that x is actually 40. So x is going to be 40. dx dt is 2. Okay, so x is 40, dx dt is 2. So then dy dt is going to be x is 40. That's unfortunate. Um, I was thinking it'd be 10, which was like a little nicer. That's all right. Here we go. 70, negative 50 over 40 squared is, is 1600. Gross. And then dx dt is 2. So what, I don't know, negative 35 with two zeros over, so negative 35 with two zeros over 16 with two zeros is uh, negative 35 over 16 times two is over eight dy dt. But now I don't think that this is like, so I don't know why I've ended up with a negative, but I think I'm just gonna say that it's moving up the building. So I got that y was, okay, I know why. I know the reason. So this distance is decreasing. This length is decreasing by 35 over eight feet per second, which means the shadow itself is moving up the building at 35 over eight um, feet per second. That's, I don't know how I would redo it so that that doesn't happen, but I am gonna write down a sentence. So the shadow is moving the building at 35 over 8 feet per second when she is 10 feet from, uh, God, what is it, T or something? From building T. Okay, this is it. This is, I, this is the quintessential related rates problem, at least geometric using um, triangles. So like any, any part that was a little unclear, like I would definitely recommend rewind, give it another pass through, um, read it again. The hardest, hardest parts, just making sense of the picture really and knowing that, you know, they cue you up for it, I think in part B when like they make you solve, like, you know, once she hits 35 feet from this building, um, then her shadow is going to be on this building. But anyway, uh, that was 1991 AB6. Super good problem. Hope you found this helpful and uh, good luck.